Imagine you are in a market for a new automobile. One vehicle is priced at around $30,000, which you quickly discount with, I can't afford that option. And the other cost is $20,000, which is in the line with what you can spend at this time. The salesperson is quick to point out the $20,000 model gets around 15 MPG fuel economy, while the $30,000 model uses solar and battery assist and runs mostly fuel free. From the buyer's calculations, the difference is about $300 per month based on his driving activity. Sometimes the I can't afford it option with more facts is reconsidered and ends up being the best solution for long term. Both metal buildings and vehicles are fuel burners. In a large climate controlled space, it is easy to save hundreds of dollars in energy costs per month from a lower end insulation system to a very well insulated system. For every $100 in savings per month, the average savings is $24,000 over a 20 year span. An additional benefit comes into mechanical and lighting system efficiency. Have you ever been in a heated or cooled building where the fans on the mechanical unit are kicking on and off and cannot keep up with demand? The wear and tear in these situations is tremendous. With a properly insulated system, the mechanical lifespan can exceed double over a poorly insulated system requiring an inefficient runtime. Have you ever seen small portable heaters in the workspace that are often left running off and on work hours? The cost to run these little burners is tremendous and can consume hundreds of dollars a month hiding in your electric bill. Air leaks are the number one cause for energy loss. It starts with the doors or windows. Even most doors out there offer a R7 insulation while for not much more we can get into foam filled doors with great seals and an impressive R27. Saving or cutting cost insulation systems in a climate controlled space is not where you want to cut costs. Often the I can't afford it option turns into I can't afford not to do the better option when the long term benefits are presented. Uh, we didn't experience a bill higher than I think maybe $350 during these cold winter months. And I'll be honest with you, that's about, well, a little more than half of where we had in a 7,000 square feet building. And this is a 20,000 square foot building, so it made quite a difference. When we uh, purchased our building from Metal Building Outland, we also purchased their energy saver package. This building is 9,000 square feet, 60 by 150 feet long. We have uh, R38 in the walls and R30 in the ceiling with their energy saver package. And our bills at the worst of winter to heat this building at 65 degrees with uh, radiant tube heaters was about $250. In the design of a metal building, when it comes to energy, we have split incentives. And what that is, is basically you have the developer who has only the responsibility to meet code, you have the installer, and you have the, the owner. The developer wants the cheapest option. He's looking for, for to make the most profit. The, and then there's the installer. I don't know how many times I've heard the installer say, you don't need that. My customers maybe buy a nice insulation package. You don't need that, but he has no data, nothing to support that, and he's not the one paying the utility bills. He just doesn't want to put it in, because it's extra labor. And then you have the um, owner who, you, do you know that if you save $100 a month on your energy bill, that equals $24,000 in 20 years? And the incentive for the owner is long-term energy savings. Then there's the energy code, which has the green movement, movement going with it. And um, people think, oh, that just makes higher costs in construction. But when it comes to energy savings, as a building owner, just go with it. Because anything the code requires you to do will save you money in the long term over the next 20 years. And it has a payback. It's the only item that in this whole green movement and the, which is about the carbon footprint that'll pay itself back.